Okay, folks, welcome to our first Transit Riders Council of the new year. Uh, may, we have, may we have an approval of today's agenda? Great. How about minutes? Any corrections, additions, uh, anything? Make See. a motion to approve. All right. Great. We will go into the chair's report. Welcome to the January meeting of our Transit Riders Council. Um, we're going to wish you all a happy new year, even though it's a long time after the new year. Um, there is so much to talk about today, so if you can save your questions until the end of the report, it would be highly appreciated because there's going to be a lot of questions, I have a feeling. As we all know, the first time since we met, uh, the time we met since, I can't even read. As we all know, the time since we last met in December has been a rough one for riders. In fact, one might say 2017 started on an up note with the opening of the Second Avenue subway, and it's sort of been downhill since then. After spring, after a spring and early summer full of problems, disruptions, delays, if you want to call it the summer of hell, you can. That was more so on the subway than on the LIRR, actually. Service seemed to stabilize somewhat through the summer and fall with the coming of the subway action plan, which began in late June. What seemed to be movement in the right direction on subway reliability reversed quickly as severe weather moved into, New into the New York area in the past two months. The snow and colder temperatures in December were only a preview of the severe cold and snow we faced earlier this month. And I think we've now heard that the two weeks uh, following Christmas were was the, the, those two weeks were the third longest stretch of sub-freezing temperatures in New York City history. Um, since our last meeting, we've seen many weather-related delays, including a rash of signal and track problems in the subway system, as well as bus delays and breakdowns, and lots of problems on the LIRR, too. Lots. As, we, as you all know, Andy Byford came on board last week as the new president of New York City Transit. As I'm sure you've been seeing and watching him on the media, and all over the place, President Byford comes to New York, New York after a successful five years as CEO of the TTC, Toronto Transit Commission. There he addressed issues that are somewhat similar to the ones in New York City, although on a much smaller scale, they have 33 stations, we have 472. <laughs> um, we met him at the board briefings last week, and I will elaborate on those discussions in my board report. In the less than two weeks he has been at the helm of New York City Transit, Mr. Byford has hit many of the notes that are important to riders, and we hope that he continues in that direction, the most important of which is he has a fresh set of eyes. He's looking at the system without any preconceived notions, and that is very refreshing, and that comes across when you hear him speak at the meetings. Um, I had expected to have a little bit more to say about Freedom Ticket, but the potential start of the pilot program, which had been scheduled for March, has been delayed due to questions about the program, due to the fact that um, the MTA has, today is the day that they're going over their budget uh, in Albany with legislators, and so they, it had to slide back a little, unfortunately. But it was going to, to preview in, it was going to be a six-month trial from March. Uh, maybe It may start in April, I'm hopeful now. Um, the idea behind the Freedom Ticket remains favorably received by MTA management as well as elected officials in parts of the city underserved by the subway system. And as we all know, Southeast Queens is a big part of that. We were hopeful the plan for the pilot would be presented uh, in the January cycle of meetings with the, pr with the trial in March. Now we're hopeful that it'll be February with the trial in April. Um, I'll touch upon that a little bit more in the board report. Um, the MTA, in cooperation with the New York City DOT, is holding a series of four Canarsie Tunnel closing open houses over the next four weeks. One of these was held last night in Brooklyn, and Chris was there. Um, if you want, you can give a slight report on that when we're done. Yeah, after, after. The other three meetings, one in Brooklyn and two in Manhattan, are being held as detailed on the flyer in your packets today. Staff will attend upcoming sessions, and other members may want to go to one of them as well. These sessions cover the same information, so if you've been to one, you probably, except you'll have different public there, are being held in an unobstructed, unobstructured format, unstructured format, goodness, where attendees can arrive any time within the specified time, cause a ruckus, <laughs> speak with New York City Transit and DOT personnel, ask questions, and depart whenever they want. There are no formal presentations 
or need to arrive at the beginning of the session. So I guess there's no show and tell. Yeah, I mean, was was there evidence of the deterioration of the tunnels like there was in the previous meetings, you know, showing pieces? Yes. Of, oh, that's good. And it was, it's actually on the news stations on New York One, News 11. Uh, I will say a lot of the news stations were there, did show it on there, and I will add that more to the end after you finish. All right. Um, you may have heard the governor announced the launch of an electric bus pilot on New York City Transit earlier this month. These plans shouldn't be much of a surprise to our members, as in July of last year we had a presentation on the plans that NYC Transit was developing for testing electric buses. The test is now underway with a total of 10 buses manufactured by two companies, Proterra and New Flyer, on three routes, the B-32, the M-42, and the M-50. As we, By the way, these buses, I asked this question, are very, very quiet. And I asked, what happens if somebody is, is vision impaired and they are not aware of the bus? And hearing impaired as well. Um, and the answer was, no, vision impaired. Um, so the answer was, as they arrive at the stop, announcements are made. So if you, if you can't see that the bus is there, you will hear that the bus is there. It's very important because these are almost silent. <clears throat> yeah. They do have a sound when they're turning, that bus turning, bus turning, you know. Yeah, I think they were, yeah, they were going to yeah. include that pilot that they had the left turn. Yes, that's, in, in the and, and also some of the new buses, which we have seen uh, descriptions of at the board, have much improved visibility for drivers. There's less obstructed views, certain um, things that are in today's buses are missing so the driver can see much more of pedestrian activity, which, which is very good. These were driver tested, so this is a major improvement when they've come. Do you want to say something, Bradley? Sorry? Oh, yes. When, if you're going to speak, can you um, push the button and talk through the microphone because this is all being recorded. Okay. Um, the goal of the pilot of the electric buses is to determine how well they perform under a range of route conditions and charging arrangements. Proterra buses operate in Brooklyn while new flyers are serving the Manhattan routes. Both, both of these were, are charged in the depots as well as the routes and I asked about whether these charging stations make any noise and they don't, they're silent. So I, I had a feeling that that would be an impediment. People wouldn't want them charging stations anywhere near them if they made a noise, but they don't. If all goes well with the pilot, the MTA will order an additional 60 all-electric buses that may be used in replacement service when the Canarsie Tunnel is shut down in 2019. There has been some, and elsewhere, there has been some political pressure from city council members to use an all-electric fleet to provide replacement bus service for the L line shutdown, but despite examples of electric buses being used in other transit systems around the country, the all-electric bus industry is really in its infancy. It is likely that New York City Transit has many lessons to learn and apply before it is ready for all electric buses to replace large numbers of diesel, CNG, and hybrid electrics. I'm sure you have all seen recent media reports about Governor Cuomo's backing for a congestion pricing program in New York City and recommendations of the Fix NYC panel that he created to consider options for congestion pricing in New York. You may remember Sam Schwartz's FAIR plan, which included toll reductions throughout the MTA bridges and tunnel system as an enticement for outer borough and suburban county officials to support congestion pricing. And I, I remember it as the Move New York plan, which was yeah. the, sort of the same thing. Yeah. This so-called toll equalization is not part of the current recommendation, which also includes new charges paid by four higher vehicle users, such as Uber and Lyft, um, in recognition of the large contributions that those services make to increasing congestion that we see on Manhattan streets. The Fix NYC recommendation would cover roughly the same area as the prior proposals um, below 60th Street to the battery and raise approximately the same amount of funding, around a billion, depending on the structure of the charges, to be dedicated to transit. This is, however, far from the only issue affecting the MTA that will be decided in Albany this session. Funding for the subway action plan, what will be done if the city declines to participate financially, will be discussed, which it appears they are as well as executive budget proposal um, to Im implement value capture through property taxes. We need to monitor these proposals and speak out as needed and when needed. At our March 8th 
PCAC meeting, we will hear from Amy Paulin, the new chair of the Assembly Committee on Corporations, Authorities, and Commissions, to discuss the committee's oversight of the MTA. Um, Chris, you want to just give a little bit about last night's L train hearing? Yes. Um, last night, I have to say, it was a decent amount of people there, but there weren't a lot of crowds. I was a little surprised and maybe a little saying why a lot of people didn't show, which we'll hope to see them on February 8th. You come in, uh, there were a good amount of officers ready. They did ask you to check, you know, your bags and this. But when you go in, they do show you where the boards of each steps they're going to be doing. One thing we did find out that the L train, Andrew, um, they did realize they made a mistake a couple of parts. They are going to terminate at Bedford, but on a single track. So, when because they're still going to do the construction at Bedford, but they're going to have temporary staircase so they can still work on the construction. But the L will still come in with passengers, take them off, and terminate at Bedford on a single track. And people can still mm -hmm. transfer at Loma or Grand Street for those buses. Mm -hmm. um, the concern was is they're showing other plans of what they're going to be doing. There was a lot of good steps they're explaining. And they are warning customers that between now, this year, before 2019, they are going to do a couple of weekend shutdowns because of they have to prepare for this. And people get to be a little bit more seeing how the M will be going to 96th Street and 2nd Avenue. Um, they are there were some, a lot of concerns that instead of having four buses running, because you forget you also have the 39 bus, they were asking why can't one other bus go over the... Can I stop you for a second? Yes, sir. The M will be not going to Queens. It will be going up 2nd no, Avenue. No, I was going to explain that in just a second. Uh, the M, will, during weekdays, it will still go to Forest Hills, mm -hmm. but evenings and, evenings and, and late weekends. nights and weekends, it will go to 96th Street and 2nd Avenue. And okay, that, that is the, uh, mm -hmm. to ease down the uh, pressure because sometimes on weekends you do have, you know, construction on the Queens Boulevard corridor and the M train will be like easy. I'm sure that's allowing for CBTC installation on the Queens Boulevard line. That's why they're doing that too. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. one. And they still have to work on the power system issue, which we did, you know, we did have, they did, there were concerns about that. Mm -hmm. The concern also is uh, customers did like to see that there's a ferry, but the concern is why there's no bus when you get off from the ferry on the Brooklyn side. Manhattan side, you have the M14 and outside the M23, both select buses. But there is concerns um, with um, some No bus areas. connection on the Brooklyn end of the ferry? No, there's none. So you're expected to walk to the subway? Yes. And they are, and I, and I know a lot of people did put their comments in. I did put my comment in saying that That's they so should... If they, yes, maybe the V32 is right there, but as an addition, they should have some, a, like a bus to somehow to get them. Because for safety concern, you don't know if you have accessible customer who needs to wants to go from a bus to connect somewhere. They, what they what they have said previously is yeah. they expect most of the ferry customers to be people who are who are in William who are already in Williamsburg, mm -hmm. not people who are arriving on the train. But, they don't they don't yeah, really they expect, expect people yeah. will. will Chain transfer yeah. before reaching. Yeah, the but they, yes. because because if you if if you had to, yeah. if you had to come in on the train, then you'd have to transfer the bus, and you'd have to transfer the ferry, yeah, then you'd have to transfer ride. to another bus, yeah. and you ha might have to transfer to another train. Yeah, most people are not going to opt for a four seat ride. No, you're right, Bill. About one thing, it is that's what they were concerned about. That's what they were they were going to think of planning, but again, that it's a it's a big issue. Some people never claims they never heard about this shutdown, and I'm like, it's been on the news. And it's been – oh, hi, Deb. I was looking just um, – it is a – Some people have said – did they say at the meeting they haven't heard about this? Yes, a lot of them did. This was an open house. And the only thing was I will say is um, regarding this uh, um, thing is there's been a rumors that some people think the L train was completely shutting down. And a lot of people did say that last night as well. And we all said – no, the L will be running in Brooklyn. So I was really glad that our News 11, our best friend from News 11, made it very clear saying Brooklyn as Greg a Mocker, word. Greg you mean? Huh? Greg Mocker. Yes, and he says hello to you. Um, so he said the L will be running from Brooklyn from Bedford Avenue on the single track to Rockaway Parkway. They are going to make, they are going to put in some additional uh, ambassadors at the. You don't really mean what you just said, do you? What? It's going to run on a single. I, I no, 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 no. Grand. Uh, no. I understood what you said yeah. about Bedford Avenue yeah. arriving on a single track, but yeah. it's going to use both tracks for the rest of the route, isn't yes. it? Yes. I would think so. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I didn't have to say it because everybody knew that it's going okay. to run in two tracks. That would be a suicide mission. Yes, it wouldn't be good. And you know, 
turning off an L train, the that whole... That means the frequency would be like 30 minutes <laughs> if it had to run on I would say track. an hour more. Well, it's not I'll that long I'll say an hour, because that line over there is a suicide mission. But either way, it's not bad. It's something needs to be... They are going to do another open house in February 8th, which I will be attending that as well. And because I do want to get more people to go to this, to learn this, and... So, when, yes, when they gave this presentation, yes, sir. not to prolong this, did they mention what other lines would get increased service? Yes, they did. The G, full G. Mm -hmm. Definitely, as I said, the M I just said again. Mm -hmm. um, they are working on the C train. Did you say the M was getting... I know you said it was getting rerouted at nights and weekends, but is yeah. it getting increased service? Yes. Okay. And the J. And, the, and they're discussing also letting the Z run a little more, not like one trip and then it goes bye-bye. They're working on that as well. The Z? Yeah. The, the mysterious well, it's not Z. just one trip of the Z now. There's more than one. I'm, some of them just do one trip and they go to sleep. I've seen it a lot because I'm not far from that office. My office, is the development center, is not far from the, that line. But I'm just saying what I see, and I'm not really concerned with the Z. The concern is from Broadway Junction to Manhattan, they are going to work on increasing service. And, you know, thanks to, I did find out, Andrew, the 82 bus SBS will be ready this fall. They are working on it because, as you know, it is a priority because it's linked to the L train to get customers to go to Kings Highway Station as accessible connection. Um, but there is more stuff that they're still going to be working on and continuing, not on the trains, but more on the buses. And DOT commissioner, head commissioner was there. And she definitely agrees that uh, maybe an idea for the Manhattan Bridge you side. Mean Commissioner and, Trottenberg? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry. I'm a little overtired today. I'm sorry. They are working. She was busy yesterday. <laughs> Just very not less busy. today, but the day before, too. So <laughs> it's not been a very easy yes, week yeah, this yeah, week. But the game thing is they are going to be working on options for additional, maybe, because the concern is something happens on the Williamsburg Bridge, where is those buses going to run? Yeah. Did they address the Grand Street corridor and what they're going to do with it? They are still working on some areas to it. I'm going to say they were um, post up. They didn't talk about anything about any HOV lanes or anything from there. But the focus is was more on the Williamsburg Bridge and up and down definitely on 14th Street. But they are supposed to be up to dating more stuff to it because they are trying to do some other ways how the bus can go around little circles and getting them you know up and down. But as you said, electric buses. They're expecting to have 70 of them running during the peak hours. Okay. Anyone, Anyone else have any questions for me on that? Any questions on the phase one of the um, four meetings that have been held up regarding the L train shutdown? The only thing Mr. that... Mr. X. Yes, sir. Can you put your, push the button? Well, uh, Polly and uh, Ronnie, who could pass with a fabulous Mula and Mae Young, uh, need to adopt more uh, ideas, adopt more suggestions. Unfortunately, I have to write them down or just check a map and see what should be done. But it appears uh, those two clowns will provide less options, not more for the riders. And I already told you how I feel about them. They both ignored me. Who was the other one besides Polly? Polly Trumber and Ronnie, who looks like one of see from Welcome Back Carter. They Ronnie is her. from Brooklyn DOT. And Bro Ronnie Hakeem. Oh, no, they she's from here. Ronnie Hakeem. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. I built him as the fabulous Moolah and Mae Young because they're both two pieces in a pot. Okay, one of them is run the MTA, which stands for Money Thrown Away. The other is run the Translation Department. Uh, both companies are bad news. As a, uh, it's been almost 17 years since I was stranded in Brooklyn, Greenpoint section, so, and neither party has answered me. So you think there should be more options? That, yes, there should be more options. If you're, if you're closing servers above Bedford Avenue, okay, then you need to put these buses on the Williamsburg Bridge. You need to put them on the Manhattan Bridge because you have no bridge connecting House Street to, uh, which street is that? South, uh, what, what would you, House Street to uh, Brooklyn Street? I think with South Fish Street, I think it said it should be. No, you don't have a you don't have a bridge connecting House Street to Grand Street in Brooklyn. No, you do not. You don't. Okay, you have no br your bridge connecting Delancey Street to North Side 
to either South 2nd, 3rd, or 4th Street. Where, where is the ferry landing on the Brooklyn side for this, for, for the ferry? Um, what's, what's the street where it... Bedford Station is at North 7th, obviously, but from there to the river, it's about a four or five block walk, uh, something uh, like that. Also, yeah. you don't have a bridge connecting North 8th Street to uh, 14th Street, no, which I've recommended years ago. So it's up to. I thought you know there would be some. I thought there would be such something like a bus shuttle from. From the Bedford Air Avenue area up to Court Square, where you have so many so many trains that you could pick from, but they're not doing that. They're doing the regular routes that that exist, obviously. So, so what does that say about the fact that Mula and May Young, they need to get it together or throw in the towel at the Goldman All Scarlet? Okay, they they plan to shut that portion down over one year from now. They need they should have adopted all these suggestions before January one. Well, I don't know that they foreclosed any of these things yet. It's still, you know, over a year away, as you say. Uh, Bedford Avenue is not yeah. going to be closed. It's just going to be a sing. It still will be open, but yeah, but you it, can't right. go west from right, there. Right, but so. you can't go west, and yeah. the and the, the, only, the, um, the the ferry la ferry landings at six. The only thing North I just, six. The North only thing six, I just want to say, I yeah, did mention basically. to them, Andrew, to the record. I just want to say, I did mention about, uh, and, and Mr. X is one part correct. I did mention about the ferry. Because when you get off, that area sometimes is sometimes dark, and they need to work on the lighting area. And DOT Pottentrot did agree with me on that. I did try to mention to Ronnie, but a couple of times she j didn't look like she took it really seriously. The issue is between that area in Williamsburg and East Williamsburg, it's the lighting issue for people, not just for visually, but yeah, that's, hearing. That's a DOT issue. Yeah, yeah but DOT yeah. agrees with me on this because the lighting areas, like even for the SBS area, some of the bus stops, when you probably put your ticket, you can't see. Yeah. So it is an issue that they are going to be working I, on. I'm assuming because when they do big projects like this, the MTA always does really good brochures about how to get around. So if your destination is such and such, here's your best route. You know, if, for instance, if it's Lower Manhattan, you might be better off taking the G to Hoyt's Gormhorn and then the A or the C into Lower Manhattan, for instance. So, you know, if your destination is Midtown, you might be better off taking the G up to Court Square and taking the se the seven or the or the E or the M into. I mean, there's just I'm sure well, they're going to. Well, you know that Court Square is getting an elevator. That's yes, one thing they I did mention. That. That's one thing that we found why the G is doing their geos, is because they're working on quicker to get the elevator ready for Court Square. And they are, and since Bedford is getting their elevator, but it's not going to be easy for them to finish that construction. But First Avenue is already starting, but when they close it, they're going to complete it, and there, therefore that L line will have six elevators as well. But it will also be easy for customers who are in this part of Manhattan can also now take the J by Let's Prayer. By 2019, we get the Board yeah, Street I, elevator. I, too. I know that the Driggs Avenue end of Bedford is getting an elevator, and yeah. there's going to be an Avenue A end of, yeah. of First Avenue that's getting elevators. I, I got that. The yeah. only thing is, is, is if we, is we as TRC, I'm sorry, Stuart, um, is it possible if we can put a letter in? I'll be quick. I'm sorry. Um, Please, we have so much to I talk am. about. I am. I'm just going to finish. Yeah. If we can do, think about putting a letter in, like, to concern of other options for them to please put in, like, a addition, like, instead of being so heavy on the Williamsburg Bridge, as put one on the Manhattan Bridge or the 59th Street Bridge to not just focus on one part of M Manhattan, but spread a little bit out. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you suggesting yeah, if you go buses from, from the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn to go to the Manhattan Bridge? There is... A bus used to have been running, because remember, Canarsie has a 103 bus that goes into downtown Brooklyn, and customers can switch to a bus to go over the Manhattan Bridge. It will take some congestion off. And the 59th Street Bridge, last time I checked, does not in any way connect with Williamsburg. No, it doesn't. Uh, I, I meant Greenpoint, and it does go up north yeah, with the 32. Yeah, but it, it's I, I think convoluted at Better best. to put people on trains if we can just, than, than I'm on. just trying to help. 
Um, Stuart, you had something? Yeah, very quickly. You were talking about, you know, like in past scenarios that the authorities had brochures guiding people where to go. Have they done any outreach to see where the people are going, whether it's downtown or midtown? You know, They've actually held, forget the four meetings that we right. just announced, mm -hmm. they've held meetings in Canarsie, in East New York, in Bushwick. In that know, but yeah. what's the outcome of that? Do um, they, like, are they traveling to midtown? Are they traveling downtown? Because that's going it's, to be it's a factor. A, it's, a, it's a mix. Because an absolute it, mix. Because even though you know it's easy to get to the and let's not forget there's some reverse commuting as well. True, uh, but if they're going downtown, and you'll have people switching at Essex Street for other lines, um, you know they really have to make sure that um, safety is paramount. These are narrow staircases to get to the F platform, and if yeah. you're going further downtown and switching across, even though there's some wider new staircases that they did in the renovation the last time. There's still a lot of bottlenecks because the transfer is at one end of the station. Uh, so If you're going downtown and you can use the G to the A or the C, um, you know, that's probably one of the areas that you... Well, the commuters at the end of the, or further along the L line would certainly, at Broadway Junction East Well, yeah, they would, but I'm talking but I'm about from... from Williamsburg, you know, taking right. the G. That's another, yeah. right. G to there or Court Square. And they are going to increase Gs, as you heard. Right. But if, uh, I'm just saying, um, I'd like to see or hear in this forum what they said, whether the majority of people were traveling to Midtown or to downtown, so that we could have an intelligent conversation, if any, and weigh in on this. Uh, when you say the people, are you referring to... L line users Riders, alone. Yeah. L line users. Right. Yeah. Riders okay. of that line. Yeah. Okay. Not yeah, there's a fair number. Of, uh, they have. They. I don't remember exactly what split they talked about, but there. They. There's actually a fair number of people who are, who are traveling along the 14th Street corridor, uh, who are L train users, and that's why they're on the L train, obviously, because they want to be, along that corridor. Right. So that. So when Mr. X talks about bus alternatives. Uh, if there are people that are going to that corridor, they're sort of inconvenienced, so to speak. Uh, well, they're going to get a dedicated SBS M14, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But you got to get to it. Yeah. Yes. Also, based on what Chris was said, uh, some of these stations will get elevators. Okay. What happened to my borough? What happened to Staten Island? Those poles are still forgotten. Um, actually, you'll be happy to know I learned, and I don't know, I'll, I'll get into a little bit in the board report about the Enhanced Station Initiative, but um, Westchester Square is due to get an elevator. So the Bronx is not forgotten, and believe me, between Freddie Ferrer and Chuck Merdler, the Bronx would not be forgotten. You can rest assured of that. So let me go into um, the board Andrew, report. I just quickly, I know, I don't know if you mentioned, because I, I, I talked to Bill about this, and I'm sorry I'm late. Once again, we'll talk about the trains af after this is over and how they don't meet up, and when one is coming in, one is going out, and they don't wait a second. But um, if did you talk at all about congestion pricing? Not or? yet. Oh, okay, because that's I what mean, I it was would a, like. It was mentioned in the, in the uh, chair's report that the governor is pushing it, and it's well, I want to talk about it and talk about not only the governor, but... We strive for okay. in, the chair, in the chair's report. Okay. So. Okay, so um, it's really something now, <laughs> uh, what's happening on the board. Um, there are definitely uh, camps, and, um, it, you know, the governor versus mayor is really playing out big time. Um, in, in terms of the subway action plan... It is moving forward, and the chair has reported, and President Byford has reported, um, some serious reductions in major incidents in areas that the action plan has been in place. Um, it is not perfect yet, but the numbers keep getting better every month, which is, which is something that you want to see. The city has not yet confirmed whether they will pay for the action plan, um, but apparently the mayor has relaxed his opposition to congestion pricing, um, primarily because the current plan that is on the table does not actually put tolls on the free bridges but puts electronic readers um, within the zone. So hypothetically, if you 
across the Brooklyn Bridge and used one of the on-ramps right onto the FDR and got off the FDR at 125th Street, you would not be subject to the, to the uh, congestion zone. However, the Williamsburg Bridge puts you flat on Delancey Street, and there's no way around that you would get hit. The Manhattan Bridge puts you on Canal Street. So unless they have readers that follow you and, and tra track you onto the FDR and make sure that you didn't go into Midtown or Downtown, I don't know how you avoid the, um, the congestion zone if you're on one of the other crossings. So. Um, as, as you heard from the report, one of the advantages and one of the selling points of the Move New York plan was, and I think a real selling point to, to people and, and elected officials in Brooklyn and Queens was that if you, if you do this plan, um, which is not on the table right now, although the governor is sort of pushing in that direction, he said he would like to see reductions on the other crossings. So, the Marine Parkway, the Cross Bay, the Throgs Neck, the Whitestone, the Triborough, and the Verrazano would have gotten reduced tolls under this Sam Schwartz's Move New York plan. It does not under the Fix NYC plan, but apparently there is some movement in that direction. Uh, uh, you'll yes. let me talk about that. I'll, I'll, I'll go further. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, there is a new Accessoride dashboard. Um, I don't know if anyone has gone online to look at it, but it is. You have. Yeah, I mean it'll show you how your how your carrier is doing, um, what the what the weights are like, um, um, how many um, non responses there are. Um, it, it's it's pretty good. Um, it's a work in progress, but it looks it looks pretty good. You've you've looked at it, right? Yeah. Do you want to say anything about that? Okay. All right. Check it out on on MTA.info. Um, there are a few test trains running of R-179 equipment um, on the J-Line now. Um, we are getting more and more of these in. Um, they are at least two years overdue because Bombardier screwed us in some ways. And um, they are trying to make up for it with, a, with an improved schedule of delivery. Um, the 179s will replace the oldest trains running anywhere on the MTA property, the R32s, as well as a few R4. There aren't many R42s left, but um, so that is good news. And of course, you have all heard that the R211 contract was approved. Um, this is a very large contract. Um, it's 535 cars. It's $1.4 billion. Um, many of the jobs will be in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Yonkers. Uh, where the Kawasaki plants are, which is, which is great news. This will replace the R46s currently on the A, the C, the R, and there's still some on the F. Um, and the R44s on the Staten Island Railway, which are really old. Um, so it's great. Um, there will be 20 cars of open gangway uh, formation, which, is, which President Byford has spoken very highly of um, in Toronto. He thinks that Open gangway cars are great. Um, we will see how great they are because on my trip down here today, there were at least five people standing in the door and people had to push them aside to get into the train. So if you had an open gangway and people were still standing by the door, the benefit of the open gangway would hardly be realized. So New Yorkers are different, but hopefully they will um, step aside. Um, one of the biggest complaints received about the R211s um, from anybody that visited the mock-up when it was at Hudson Yard Station was the position of the handholds, the bars above the seats. They were in a bad position and they were so high that you really needed to be a basketball player to, to reach them. They have heard that complaint and they will be adjusted. So that is great news. They announced that yesterday. Um, <clears throat> the Enhanced Station Initiative, uh, that is all the news today. Um, they were supposed to have approved um, number four and number eight yesterday. Um, the city's representatives um, spoke up very vociferously um, about the Enhanced Station Initiative. Is it the best use of the over $200 million? How were the stations selected? What is the criteria for selection? Was anyone in the neighborhoods affected notified? Um, we were never notified how the stations were selected. We know from elected officials that nobody was uh, asked what stations in your neighborhood do you think would be best. However, having said all of that, the Enhanced Station Initiative and what it's going to do and what stations were selected should not be confused with the $2.5 billion station rehab program, which does address some stations um, which have great need. 
Um, and I think it probably would behoove MTA to issue the list of those stations ASAP so that people can make the distinction between the major station re uh, renewals and the, the so-called cosmetic renewals that the ESI um, puts out. Um, but one thing that I was told, um, because there was many calls for accessibility, and we don't have enough accessible stations, not even close to enough, and that, that, that point was hammered home, and it was announced that at least in one round of the ESI stations, Westchester Square will be getting elevator. Um, so that's, that's, that's great news. Uh, right now, there is uh, Andrew, a month. Andrew, oh, yeah. sorry. It should be noted that what's going on downtown right now with the developer on Broad Street want giving private money to make that station accessible, and there is so much NIMBY going on at the same time. Yeah. And somebody should bring this. I don't know if it was brought up at the board meeting. It was not. But, or maybe Chris, you, or Edith, or somebody. Yeah, in because, session, because um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the developer of 15 yes. Broad said that as his contribution, he would make the station there accessible, and the community, the community board, or at least vocal people on the community board, are now saying that they don't want that station made accessible and some of the things that they said are really disgraceful i think you know and talking about i've never heard people. someone say i don't want this station accessible <laughs> no they that's basically what they that's basic <laughs> local residents but they spoke at the community board meeting has the community about board it. taken community board one i guess this yeah, is have yes, they taken a position and and so no i'm just saying that oh. this is not obviously the mta position or right. anything but when the whole question of accessibility comes up you've got a big i didn't even realize until it was brought to my attention but there is this this real nimby attitude towards people with disabilities which i couldn't believe myself Yes, it, it, because oh. um, Trudy, maybe there's another spin to it. Look what's happened on Fulton Street. The station has beautiful elevators. One end of the station, they're cleaned by the vendor that's maintaining the mall. At the other end of the station, it's a homeless refuge, and it's a piss pit. So the community may have legitimate concerns that's about, not about, the, about the schedule of a new device that might not regularly be cleaned. So, uh, that's so there, not, there may be other issues out Stuart, there. Stuart, that saying, is not what they said. And if you get yeah, a transcript right. of the meeting, yeah. you will hear it. You will see it. Somebody okay. say something about uh, it could be a target for terrorists or something? Is that what I heard? Yes, we both did. Oh, you were at the meeting? Oh, because I was just called about it. And, yeah, and it doesn't mean they're telling you all the issues. Okay, that's true, but... Yeah, they are. Just okay, that's why... No, Edith, you didn't come when I started by saying... Well, I'm sorry, the elevator was out. No, 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 but Edith, it was pure NIMBY, and I was bringing up because of the fact... Okay, we've we got so much to talk about. Let's... Stations. Can I be quick, Andrew? One second, Ken has been waiting. Okay, a, a quick comment, you're concerned, surprised that people be concerned about uh, disabilities... Uh, design modifications being uh, opposed sometimes what they do for physically disabled people makes it more difficult for blind pedestrians yes. so, so users so sometimes is a, a tricky uh, trade-off yeah yeah that's that's a good point Ken um, Chris your last comment and then we're moving on for the record, just to let you guys know, community, as Edith and I were both there at the subcommittee and the regular board meeting, which was two days ago. That's why I said I worked three days in a row, 8 to midnight. Um, the board voted yes because Jenny Natler was there. Borough President uh, was also there. Came in late, Edith, because you when you left, so I Borough was President still there. Gail Brewer. Yes, yeah. and she did mention it as well, and representatives did, and there was no one putting it down for that elevator. Okay. The only concern was, and everyone's comments is correct, but the concern was is they think it was going to be another terrorist, which I don't think the lady who said on New York Times does not understand. It's not just. Anywhere you go, you're going to have a terrorist. You can have it right in this building. You can have it anywhere. The concern, she has her concern, but we have our concern as well. But 
the thing is, is, is it is voted in. It is going through. For the, I want, and it's uh, privately paid for. It's privately paid. It is going to be accessible, but it will also make it easy for customers who are coming from Queens and the Williamsburg area of and Williamsburg area of Brooklyn because it needs an elevator. So customers can go get their reduced fare metric card, go see the Statue of Liberty, or go to the Indian Museum right across the street, or come see us here at the MTA headquarters. The J Line needs it. It will okay. eat. So I like to think that clear for the record. The advertisement is over now. I didn't. For that topic. For that topic. Okay. Um, moving along. Where the Enhanced Station Initiative stands right now is that um, President Byford is looking over the list of stations, the criteria by which stations were selected should be disseminated to board members, and this will be revisited at the February meeting. It is not dead, but it is suspended for a month. The ones that have already been contracted for, which is three in my neighborhood, and uh, Astoria obviously is going ahead, so it, it is, you know, unlike the front of uh, AM New York today, which makes it look like it's, it's done. It is not totally done, but this is yet again another piece of the fight between the mayor and the governor. And it, unfortunately, these, this fights more and more are affecting riders of the transit system as well as all New Yorkers. That information that you said you're going to be supplied with, could we could it be sent to us also, please? The criteria by which stations are selected. The yes. and, and, and the difference as as between the EIS and the major station renovation yeah. because people are, I don't know about the rest of you, but no, no, I, agree with you. I keep on getting calls about, every time something like this appears on the, on, on, on the, the news, news, my phone start or on the internet or anything, yeah. my phone starts ringing off the hook or my okay. email starts going off. So if you could send it, at least I know what to reply or I can just send it out to people. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, um, one of the two, two of the uh, board members are very, very high on platform doors um, and have spoken on many occasions. Uh, they're, well, they're high on platform <laughs> doors, yeah. So, um, while the L train shuts down, the Third Avenue station will be uh, retrofitted with platform doors. Um, I had a long talk with President Byford about platform doors. Um, and, and the chairman as well, uh, they can't be put in places where the platforms are very narrow, such as a 72nd Street and Broadway station, which is, you know, is from 1904 and is really, really narrow. Uh, we were lucky to be able to actually get elevators uh, to, fit, to fit on the ends of those platforms. Also, platform doors add a great deal of weight to the platform, so platforms that are not really well, uh, I don't want to say endowed, but uh, well suspended, um, and you know, really well um, supported by, by by lots of extra beams can't take them. Um, and then you know there are other issues with platform doors, such as New Yorkers uh, like to hold doors. If you hold one, does that make the entire station unusable? Should the should the thing uh, break? Um, what does it mean for um, for the costs? Uh, they are extremely expensive. And another thing is dwell time. If you've ever been on the air train to JFK. Or, um, or the uh, Jubilee Line extension, as President Byford and I were, uh, were talking about, the time it takes for the train to shimmy up to the platform doors, make sure that everything is all in line with each other, and then open adds to dwell time. Um, of course, there are safety factors to the, to the platform doors. You can't be pushed onto the tracks while they're there. But there are, you know, it is, it is, a, it is, it is not a black and white issue. There are areas that are good and areas that are bad. We don't know what the maintenance would be. We don't know how much more you could do for the subway system if that giant, ex you can't do it on all 472 stops, obviously. Uh, but they will be looking at it and, we'll, and they will look at how people observe it uh, while the L train line is shut down. When it reopens, they will look at Third Avenue. Bert and then Edith. Just a question, is, is the door going to take up the whole length of the platform? With openings in the... It's not... It, you know, several of them, not yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's it's not going to block the stairwell down to the platform. No. That's a la Paris, what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. 
where you can't even get down to the platform once the doors slam shut if a train is coming so in. This, no, it's this not going to be that. means I have to install the entire length of the platform. Entire length. Edith. I'm concerned about the issue uh, that we currently have where the trains are not lining up to the humps on the platform. And I'm very concerned that this is going to make that situation much worse. Is this, are the places where you're experiencing this a place that you've used a lot? And, and ha are they the same car types or have they changed car types? The new car types have, are not going all the way up on the A yet. Right. Um, right. They seem to be running on the C or the E. I'm not sure. But I've, on I've the seen A, them. they have added and taken away from the C. Right. I'm happy to add R32s, which right. are the really, really old ones. Are those the ones that aren't lining up? They are not lining the old, up. The old crinkle can, as I call That's it, are the not R32s. lining up. The, That's the, the, the R32s. The conversation pits line up relatively, but we haven't had conversation pits for a bit. Um, so that, I mean, I'm, I'm in the right place. I know where I belong. I belong in this immediately no, of in front of the conductor. But the 32s were recently introduced to the A, and that's why you're getting this problem. Right. So uh, I'm very concerned about the, um, you know, we, it's taken a real long time to train our wheelchair users about the blue signs. And this is going to make it very complicated. Um, I can find out what percentage of, of trains running on the A are now 32s. It, it's not high, but um, I, I have noticed, you know, the C now has 32s, um, 40, 46s, and 160s. We have all three types on the C now. Um, you only have problems with the 32s on the A stations uptown, correct? The, 40, the conversation seating ones were fine for you. The conversation seats were relatively good, but it's not a consistent issue. I don't know whether... The, the driver is overshooting, which, which is what I've been told by transit, that he's just not stopping in the right place necessarily. And then it's the core type. I mean, Are we talking about 175th Street Station? Of course. Yes, okay. Although they're raising 145. Uh, they're, they've, they're sort of like a seam down the center at the moment. It's been, it's been a slow process. So it'll be very exciting to see what they end up in the long run. Um, hopefully someday we'll have a universal car. I can have a fantasy, people. Okay. Um, can we move on? Because we have so much to talk about. The, um, will we have a chance to talk about the you subways? Will. That's about why, I'm, the subway that's why I want to get done with no, this. No, I'm not talking about congestion pricing, but something else yes, is happening. Yes, always. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, we have a new transit police chief. Um, Scott, maybe you know Chief Della Torre, uh comes from Staten Island, uh, was the head of Patrol Borough Staten Island. Um, I went to uh, Chief Fox's final walkout, which was really well attended, and um, had a good talk with the chief about various issues uh, of concern. He seems really sharp. Um, we can uh, have him as, as a speaker one day, but... Uh, he is learning the ropes of the subways. It's very different from the other patrols that he's been on, but he has some great people to talk to, and uh, he seems like a real stand-up guy and um, um, knows, knows a lot of the issues about what's, what's facing subway riders, um, has spoken about a possible initiative of, about the homeless in the subways. This has been a very, very cold winter, and more people are on trains than ever before, specifically the C, the E, and the R, because they never leave underground. Um, he would like to find rooms at the ends of some of these lines where there is a large homeless population, actually have some coffee in there, and invite them in and explain to them what their options are and where they might go instead of sleeping in the subways. Um, so don't know where that plan is going, but it is something that he's seriously considering, and he's looking at World Trade Center on the E as one of the per first places that he can uh, institute this. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop now because there's so many other issues. Um, Trudy, you want to get into the, your congestion pricing talk because we do have to move. Uh, yes. First of all, I don't know who came up with the term driver tax as as another term but i've received a number of emails about this including one from the greater new york chamber of commerce 
talking about because the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce is right now doing a hello. Thank you. The the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce is right now doing a survey of all their members. I'm a member. I know the head of it, and they use that term, but I had heard it a number of times before. I don't know where it came from because it is definitely not a tax. It's not a new tax. Some of the opponents of congestion pricing it's more a user fee than a tax. Had had uh, it, no, but this is the term that they're using, driver tax. So I would like to go on record, and maybe we can. Uh, well, le let me jump ahead of myself and just say I'm hoping that afterwards we're talking, I would like to bring up a resolution because I would like us to be in fi to do right to say something, and I know some of the people from the outer boroughs are going to question this, Maybe. but in favor of congestion pricing, and I will now tell you. Are we you, on record already? Are we? No, we were on the record we are, we, uh, for the New, move move New, New York, York plan. plan. Yeah. Yeah. For the New yeah. York plan for for uh, yeah. Sam which, Schwartz's. Which reduced. Yeah, so Tolls well, on the out bridges that didn't that go to the Sam central Schwartz's, business district. Sam Schwartz, but Sam Schwartz is working very closely right now with the governor, and and including having some kind of a rationalization, it, including people using the uh, the Midtown Tunnel, the um, uh, Brooklyn Battery, anything that brings them into the congestion jail zone not being charged both a toll and a con congestion pricing toll, which should reduce the, the cost. In other words, you're not going to get billed twice for, for driving into New York. And they have that those who choose to use those. Is it a is it a complete elimination of the congestion fee or was it a reduction of the congestion uh, fee? As from what I understand is if you pay the t now you know, I, I may, of course, the, these, some of these things change almost hourly, you know, as, but the last I heard, if you paid a toll in the tunnel or the bridge, um, is there a bridge down, that goes into the, that zone? No. I don't you don't pay, you don't pay a toll. Yeah. No. So the, t yeah. either the tunnel tolls, you it's did not pay a congestion t pricing toll at all. That was the last that I that I heard. As I said, right. all of this is being negotiated right now. Does but the whole idea is not to make this onerous to the people in the other. I'm not even going, even going to use the term the outer boroughs because all the boroughs are equal. I come from Brooklyn originally, so uh, so. Uh, but to have all the four boroughs, but it everybody agrees that it is Manhattan and the, especially the CBD that has the most of anybody who's ever been caught in okay. Midtown. Well, need, okay, so the whole idea of this is it is not a tax. It is not just a revenue enhancement raising thing. It is to deal with two problems, two horrendous situations at the same time. And that's the way it should be presented. It, as I said, it's been by the opponents. It's been presented many other ways. And I would hope that while we came out in favor of the New York plan, that we now come out in favor of, as what I said, a plan that will help solve two very serious problems at the same time without it being a terrible cost to anyone. What, what, if, what, what if the council sa said that the council reiterates our, uh, the uh, PCAC's previous support for, con for congestion pricing so long, so long as, uh, as it is implemented equitably, uh, taking into consideration toll, other tolls that are paid? Uh, beautiful. I, I think that you have to be clear on which plan we're supporting. Last time it was move NYC, it was move, uh, move and if New this York, is a yeah. new plan, then that's how you have to address it because yeah, these the, plans are going to continue to come. Yeah, the problem and, with this and is, I don't, I, oh, sorry. I know, but the, yeah. the problem that, that, as you call it, the outer boroughs have, we have I to be, know. I'm not calling me, it the you had your opinion, let me, let me speak mine. Okay. So what happens is if you do a blanket, then it assumes that everybody is in support of it. 
when we go to vote. And I want to just be clear that if we're going to support the NYC fix plan if, as it's being presented, that's one thing. I just don't want to do a whole blanket congestion pricing thing. Yeah, the, prob the problem is that it, 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 it has changed or looks like it will, cha it, it will change before it gets to a final vote. And if we support the uh, Fix NYC, I mean, the, the Fix NYC does have a credit for, tol for tolls paid elsewhere in, 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 in its Jersey plan, yeah. Uh, I, do, I, I do not know about that, but I, but I, I know that the, there is a credit. You're, you're supposed to be credited with the tolls that you pay uh, through the Midtown Tunnel and through the, through the Battery Tunnel. Well, now, if, um, if, if the supposed charge for a private vehicle which has widely been reported as eleven dollars and right. fifty two or fifty three cents is the Would, fee. Do you then it's remove to, the charge that you paid in the battery or the Queen's Smith Hotel uh, and then you pay the difference? Well yeah well it's equal to the it's equal to the two way easy pass cost to get through the to get through the tunnel. Okay. Let, let me try it it will be the same. In other words, whatever you were paying to go through the tunnel would be the same as the cost of, and Marisol, to answer your concern, and please, just for the record, I never refer to any other borough as the outer boroughs. We are all equal. Actually, Brooklyn, Brooklyn is the most inner borough. Yes, so I mean, and I don't like it's that the term. the only borough that you have to go through I, I another borough even, to get out of New York. I don't even like that term. But, but if we could do something, Bill, that just refers to the concept of congestion pricing without well, we talking about that no. would raise both raise money and 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 cure some of the congestion in the CBD without getting into the specifics of okay. the New York you know the Sam Schwartz plan okay, or what the governor wants or what anything else I think that that might you know, I think the way Bill presented it would be very useful. I, I think there's, a, you know, I think there's a disagreement between that, but I think we might have to resolve it offline, or online rather, just because of of time considerations. We do have guests who are co who have come to present some things to us. Go ahead, Ellen. I'm just wondering if, as the Riders Council, a critical piece of this is the only real solution to getting buses moving is by reducing the congestion on the streets. And if it's not a rightful um, place for us to be speaking out about that and a need for a new revenue stream, those are the two places that out of the heart of the Transit Riders Council, I think, matter, affect our riders the most. And if that's an element that would be helpful to include. I mean, I think we're on safe ground if we say the transit system is undergoing a crisis. It needs a long-term, sustainable, uh, large funding, funding source. source. Um, congestion pricing is one of those avenues. It's the only one on the table at this time. Uh, we await the final details of the plan, but um, you know, we have come out in favor of reducing congestion uh, and and. And at the no, I, I, I think that what Ellen just said specifically, because that is in our purview, that in the CBD, in the Central mm -hmm. Business District, that we, there is such a problem with buses. Trudy, did you really think we didn't know what CBD stood for? This well, a, I've used this term with other people. This is an informed group. Okay, yeah. fine. But I, I won't pick on your puns if you don't pick on my abbreviations. But okay? I think, I, Deal. Trudy, I think Andrew was on the right track, so I think... Um, if Bill, no, what I was going to say, if Bill maybe could do a draft, or Bill and Ellen I'll, together, and then send it to us, and then we can all send it I'll back to our comments. I'll circulate the details of the plan, but, you know. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll circulate some things, and it may, be, it may be one, or it may be several, or it may be one with, option, with, with, with A, B, or C in it, but we'll get something out to the members. By the way, one of the really, really interesting things out of the Fix NYC data was that 4% of, of Brooklyn and Queens commuters are driving to the CBD. 4%, whereas 80, 
85 are, are using mass transit. Yes, Edith. I think it's important. It's important not to focus solely on the impact on the CBD because it's like dominoes. Mm -hmm. And it eventually hits the Bronx and Brooklyn and Queens and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, So that a problem in the CBD is felt all the way uptown. And our community board has taken a position of, about um, perhaps there should be provision made for folks who would have driven in, but now who will take mass transit. We don't want them going to the areas where the, where the congestion zone ends. You know, we want perhaps some parking rides or some provisions made for larger parking lots in other, in other places so that everybody is not on the most crowded parts of the transit system. But anyway, we, we do have to move to our speaker, I believe, because they have a, a time, time limit, right? We will have time for all of the other discussions after that. So, uh, Bill, where is our... So, Jim Sears is Senior Director for Market Research, um, a position he's held at New York City Transit since September of 2000. Um, he's, uh, he's also worked in budget, track, and structures, and ops planning at the agency. He's a lifelong New York resident and transit user. And uh, James Rubin is the Principal Transportation Planner for Market Research for New York City Transit. Um, he has worked uh, in the market research group since starting at the agency in 2014, before which he worked in D.C. for the Federal Transit Administration. So, um, market research, uh, we, we, we're very interested in this topic, and uh, great to see you gentlemen, and please push your buttons and continue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Albert, Mr. Henderson. It's nice to be here. Uh, actually, I see some familiar faces here around the table. We've worked before on projects, so many of you may have an idea of what we do. Uh, James and I, uh, basically, market research answers one central question. What is the customer experience? What do customers think? And we also, to some extent, what do our employees think? It's our job to find out this kind of information for use within uh, New York City Transit. And when we say within New York City Transit, I'm going to flip to the next screen. Uh, thank you. Our audience, our clients, if you will, within the Transit Authority, within New York City Transit, are the operating departments, Department of Subways, Department of Buses, Bus Technology, Operations Planning, and other offices throughout the agency. Uh, quite frankly, James and I uh, have the pleasure of really getting an overview of how the system works, because we get to work with many, many different aspects of the organization. Now, when we say, what is the customer experience, uh, how do we go out there and get that information? Our foremost basic method of getting information from customers is listening to customers, going out, doing face-to-face -face surveys. We've been fortunate uh, to take advantage of advances in technology, in research technology. In other words, James and I can now write questionnaires, <clears throat> load them onto uh, computers, have our surveyors go out and uh, talk to people, very simply. We design questionnaires that can be used in the system so we have to be brief. We gather information between trains many times or between buses. We're also on board trains and buses for different types of surveys that we undertake. Uh, we also do telephone or online surveys. We design online surveys that are used uh, by the public or by employees. Uh, telephone surveys, that's something we need help with. It, for example, with paratransit, we've, there are two, over 2,000 calls that are made every, every cycle of surveys. So uh, we get a consultant for that. But by and large, we do most of the work ourselves. We also conduct one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, uh, in-depth interviews. Uh, an example of that is working with the uh, on-the-go kiosk, which I imagine many of you have seen in the system or have experienced. Uh, we actually go through an exercise with people and get their feedback on how easy is the machine to work with, uh, what features could be more helpful, 
things like that. So we do that kind of one-on-one -on -one and group conversations. We will sometimes convene focus groups with customers or employees, depending on uh, the nature of our clients' needs. Oh, I uh, have put up a, a picture uh, which shows things that we've done in 2017. Just to give you an idea, we have up in the upper uh, left corner the R211, the open house that we did uh, down at Hudson Yards. Top center is a bus information sign, which uh, is installed now on select bus routes throughout the city. There was a test among three different vendors, and the uh, bus signs display information such as the next stop, transfers, time until transfers, connections, uh, and local maps in some cases. Uh, then we have a couple of pictures in the center row on the left of the uh, new station initiative, the rehab at, that's at Bay Ridge Avenue in Brooklyn. We were out there discussing the communications with customers. Did they understand how the enhanced station initiative would work? Do they understand that the station will be closed? Uh, do they get the message? So we test, we test communications for uh, marketing and for the MTA. Uh, down on the left is another, uh, it's a subway action plan program, Operation Track Sweep. Uh, we do surveys to see if the effects of these initiatives are noticed and appreciated. Uh, in the center bottom is a select bus service. We do surveys on the select bus service to track perceptions of service quality before and after implementation of uh, the new service patterns. And then on, on the lower right is uh, another communications issue, the effectiveness of posters. That's a poster relating to countdown clocks and to the Subway Time app. I leave the, whoops, I think I put you back. Sorry. It's all right. Uh, I leave the top right one for last, that little top right illustration. That is somebody talking to a customer. That's the foundation of what we do. We talk to customers, we get answers, we find out what they think and what their experience is. So. So as we talked about uh, what we're up to, this is a, a little sampling of what we did in 2017 relating to the subway action plan. We talked about operation and track sweep. The format that we used for uh, that survey is something we call a before and after survey with a control. And if I may ask James, if you could explain what a before and after survey with a control is. Sure. Uh, with a before and after survey, what we like to do is we like to go into the station or into the situation and survey before the implementation of the new technology or the change to get customers' opinions or attitudes. Um, and then what we do is we go in and we survey after and we, we notice if there's any change from the before to the after. We do this in, in conjunction with doing a control station or route that doesn't experience the change. That way, if we see attitudes going up on the control station that didn't see the change, but also going up on our before and after survey, we know that we have to look a little bit more carefully because there's something more going on um, that meets the eye. So we use the control to compare the change to what we're actually looking at. Thank you. Great. And uh, other subway action plan uh, projects that we undertook, the uh, enhanced station initiative communications, as I said, we were out at uh, Bay Ridge Avenue. Uh, just to make sure that people understood how the enhanced station initiative would work at that station. Did they understand that the station would be totally closed? Did they understand uh, the options they had for alternate travel? And we would track or record what people had to say. And we also take their comments about what they thought of the program and uh, their opinions on these items. So we would gather that information. Uh, as we said, the communications regarding countdown clocks and subway time, we wanted to see if the communications, if the posters got the main points across, did people notice them, and did they retain the information that we hoped they would. So that's another uh, subway action plan project that we had. And the subway announcement baseline was a system-wide, we went around the system and we just got people's perceptions of uh, subway announcements in general, how informative they are, how simple they are, how consistent they are. And then we put these, shall we say, in the bank because now uh, there will be changes in how announcements are made. Some of you may have noticed it. We're going to go back into the system uh, a little later on in the before and after format and see what people think, what opinions they have regarding the consistency, 
the clarity and the uh, informative quality of announcements. And we also do a lot of work with new technologies. Uh, some of you were part of the research on the R211 when we, ah, yes sir, that's correct. When you uh, came down and told us what you thought of the R211 design at the mock-up and the open gangway, so we collected information from uh, special needs communities, the uh, public at large, in an open house that was run at Hudson Yards for a week. Uh, the bus information signage, that illustration, same, same idea. We go on the bus, we ask people if they understand what this sign is for, have they noticed it, have they used it, and what suggestions do they have. Uh, we did a technology project with the bus department on uh, pedestrian turn signals and collision warnings. That was an interesting project because we not only did we talk to customers, we talked to operators specifically about the collision warning systems. We wanted to know if the operators found these warnings, in other words, you're approaching a pedestrian, you're approaching a bus. Is that information helpful to you? Um, is it timely? Does it make you a better driver? Do you feel it's a help? So we have done that with our uh, operators. So that was an instance of collecting uh, employee feedback in addition to customer feedback. And also on-the-go kiosks, we had what we were calling in-depth uh, interviews at the kiosk. In fact, would you like to tell them what, how we did those in-depth interviews? Sure. We started with a round where we, we uh, intercepted folks in the system at each of the two different kinds of kiosks that we have. We have two different styles of kiosks with two different programming, and we did an initial survey there. We, we asked them for their email addresses if they were interested in participating in further research, and if they were, we called them back to do a 30-minute in-depth session in front of both different kinds of kiosks. In fact, we started at 42nd Street Grand Central at one type of kiosk, had them spend about 10 minutes with that one, had them go through a series of tasks and ask them some questions, and then we took the shuttle across town and we did the same exercises at the other type of kiosk, and we allowed the customers to evaluate both types right there on the spot and tell us what they thought worked best out of each of the different types. Yes. So you know, was, you'd, uh, be, you'd be amazed how many people think that that's real-time information on those kiosks as opposed to scheduled next trains. It's a blend my understanding. There's some schedule, there's some uh, real-time depending on the source, the data source. If you could get real-time on the on the goes, it would be wonderful because as you know on the B division the uh, the clocks that are that are very scant, there's like maybe one a platform. So if those could be, if that information could be moved to the on the goes, it would be it would be a big saving of money for out front as well. But yes. it would be amazing. Great. Thank Andrew, you. Andrew, since you interjected, I if I just can have one moment, which is everything you've been talking about is being proactive on your side, soliciting information. I am wondering, I have not heard you mention going through the letters, emails, phone calls, complaints that people have, what they are concerned about, not what you're asking them out, but what are unsolicited and also unsolicited people giving their ideas and giving you information that you might have not even thought of. Do you do anything with that at all? Well, I think uh, I'll get to Ms. Prentice after I finish this question. I'm Trudy Mason, by the way, Ms. and Mason, I used to work you. here and did some of what you are doing right now okay. with my friend Susan Berman, who was in charge of what ah, you were doing. Ah, very good. Okay? Thank you. Thank so, you. Just Thank so you. you know where I'm coming from. Thanks, Ms. Mason. I appreciate it. Uh, in, in the sense of, in every project we do, we always have a, an open, almost always have an open question, if you will, for comments or suggestions. Now, in terms of unsolicited comments, I, I think you might profit from a visit from Greg Bullock sometime soon. Uh, he runs the... Uh, the no, no, no. But uh, I know who these people are. If you are doing market research, do you, so you do not take into consideration anything that is received by somebody else, not your department. You have certain things that you do, but the complaints, the problems, the things that you maybe should know about. Is there any communication? You're dealing with communication. Is there any communication on that between you 
and that side. With the, uh, when you say that side, I guess you mean the Greg Bullock world. I right? am talking about the customers, the people who use the system and are unhappy with certain aspects of the system or the way things so are working out. So somebody sends a letter out. about on the goes and they're unhappy about it. Do you get that information? Is that what you're saying? Basically, well, yeah. I mean, do you hear about or you say complaints? about the SBS, about Thank the way you, that so many people complaining about the SBS for various things. I get a lot of those complaints and I would be happy to share them with you, but you're saying that you really don't deal with that. Well, the person who would get the SBS complaints would be the people who operate the SBS. Yeah, I understand that, but you, you're still not getting what I'm saying. Do you then talk to the people who operate the SBS to say, have you gotten any complaints? Are, Are there any the problems? problems? I am not privy, thank you. I am not privy to the feedback. It goes to the responsible entities. And there is no communication between you and the entities as to the feedback that is unsolicited from your, not your focus groups, your people that you email or anything else. And if not, may I suggest that that might be very, very helpful for your market research. Okay, thank you for that suggestion. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, Ms. Prentice, oh, we, we uh, yes. I have a concern about depending upon the on the go, which historically, uh, the rider, the disability rider community are not happy with. The fact that it does not include um, any, you know, closed circuit, it doesn't include people with disabilities, it just, you know, someone who is deaf, uh, blind, cannot communicate with it, etc. So that I, th yeah, and we were promised at that time that this would be rectified. And how many years ago was this? So that I, I, I'm just a little concerned about depending upon that as a leg of the stool. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Carfier. Um, um, my question is, have you done any of the research that's going into the development of the new website? We are, our group is not uh, involved in that. The MTA is probably involved in that. The MTA traditionally has done the website research. So you haven't done it? We haven't. There's, a, there's an MTA unit that uh, so also I does market. your help in this matter? Well, we each have our projects, shall we say. Stuart. I wanted to just, hello. I wanted to just go backwards with something that Trudy was raising in two parts. So your unit is housed within what division at the authority? Sure. We're in the marketing and service information unit of uh, New York City Transit. A in New York City Transit. And who do you report to? <clears throat> I your, your, fi your findings, your findings. Oh, our findings are reported to our clients. In other words, I don't invent the projects. The bus technology unit comes to me and to James, and they say, we've got these new uh, collision warning systems out. We'd like you to t find out what the operators think. Yeah. Right. So you would share your results with the units who requested the information. Absolutely. So if, as Trudy was saying, there was something that the unit that was uh, installing the on the goes asked you to do, you would share your results oh, with them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. If there wasn't something that they asked you to do, would you sh or a project that crossed units, would you share the results with those units? Well, for, it would go to, let's say car equipment sends a, a project to us that would involve car equipment and communications. Usually both of these entities would be involved in working with us to design the project, and we would share the results with both of them. Right. So um, this piece that Trudy was talking about I think is very, valu yeah. is very valuable. So, and it goes back to... The, the final question I have, and that's in terms of, uh, and Ellen, if she's here, or Carol may want to, hello. In, in terms of the, you know, uh, when we design surveys and we uh, capture information, we want to make sure we have random samples. We want to make sure that sample size is valid, how you, how you choose the people you talk to. So, you know, and then 
sharing all that information. So it seems like right. there's a piece that's missing, and I just... Well, actually, asking if you want to talk a little about methodology, when we do a survey, we're very, very conscious of samples. You, you know that 385 is a magic number? That means if you have a situation where it could go 50-50 either way, and you want to be right 19 times out of 20, and you want to be within five percentage points of the true value in either direction, get 385 randomly selected samples. So yes, we do that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, Stuart, I don't think you get what I was talking about. It's sharing in the other direction. The department, the agency, whoever it is, they oh, receive get it. comments, they receive criticisms about all of the different things that you've been researching. And if they don't, if you don't ask them for their unsolicited sample, you're soliciting information, you're doing it one way only, and you're being, to use the common term, you're being proactive, you're not being reactive. I mean, Deborah will tell you all the complaints that come into her all the time, a lot of them from me, because I get the calls. And if you don't take that into consideration, with the SBS, I could sit with you for the next hour. I've never been in a focus group. But boy, can I give you, if you wanted me to be in it, or I can give you 10 people who could be in it. And all I'm saying is that your survey shows one thing, but it's not dealing with reality because you have selected the people who you're surveying, not the people who have come on their own. Well, like I say, we collect information and give it to the interested departments. I don't fix the problems on the buses. But why don't you collect from the interested departments? Why don't you ask the, the interested, interested departments? The interested departments are responsible for fixing the problem. No, but you don't know what it is, and you're giving them information which is only partial. Why don't you, before you give them the results, also find out what, not your selected people, but other people who you haven't selected. They constantly your... get this information from Greg Bullock and his people. No, but why it's isn't it combined? It's I think the answer, division. Trudy, he gave the answer was that he's doing this for clients, clients being internal clients. Internal I know clients. something that clients will also give you feedback if you ask them for it, not just about your survey, but about what's going on. Let's, let's move well, they on. They get it constantly. Ellen. I'm sorry. Um, on a back to a topic before of the website. Um, and so uh, we're hoping for a much cleaner website. And also, though, because you are a, a knowledge collector of, of information, um, uh, wondering if I know a lot of times for websites there are beta tests and that sort of thing. And the importance of transit um, giving important information because you end up having your own website inside of the, the MTA umbrella and, and thinking if, if you can advance asking to be put in that beta, which I would think you would be, but uh, testing, if, uh, and I would think there's going to be one. So, so I think that would be valuable for well, uh, I, I like the idea of beta testing. Uh, we're actually doing something similar to that right now on another project where uh, we had a soft launch where we invited employees to take a survey first to make sure that the survey worked, was comprehended by the respondents, and could be completed. And we're going to be talking with them actually very soon to see if the survey works before we put it out to the public. It might be nice to have a sort of marketing portal where you're able to collect a wider range of information possibly, and, and as, as Trudy is bringing up, you know, the information that's unsolicited as well as solicited so mm -hmm. that there's sort of a, a Well, unsolicited capture. and solicited information does make it to the responsible entities. But not to you. I am responsible for gathering customer information. Let's, let's go on with the presentation. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, and uh, just to close out, uh, as uh, Ms. Mason was talking about, we did research and continue to do research on select bus service using the before and after and control method. Okay, so we'll look forward a little towards 2018. And in 2018, we'll be doing more work in support of the Subway Action Plan. We are doing an onboard route level customer satisfaction survey 
which is actually going out into the system and talking to customers on every route in the system, gathering information, gathering perceptions of service quality. And that will be information that I think will be published pretty regularly starting after the first quarter. We will also be following up on subway announcements. We will be gathering perceptions of customers on the quality, the clarity, consistency of announcements. Uh, and we'll be reporting on that to see what improvements have been made as a result, as a result of the subway action plan and the initiatives therein. Uh, we always do the annual paratransit customer satisfaction survey. The results of that will be published probably in the next couple of months. That's the 2300 uh, phone survey. And why is it 2300 instead of 385? Because when you want to talk about subpopulations, you need that same sample size each time. I can't take a sample of 385 people and then say, well, can you tell me about the left-handed redheads? What do they think? My, you know, if I find, let's say, four left-handed redheads among my 385, that's not precise. I would probably have to go out and find 385 left-handed redheads. So that's also a part of the sampling and statistical methodology that we follow. And we'll be out in the subway system on 2nd Avenue, uh, actually, in the first quarter. We're going to be trying to find out there may be people who are taking the system for the first time on 2nd Avenue. In other words, We've had a decrease in Lexington Avenue people, but an increase in 2nd Avenue people that may exceed the decrease on Lexington. So there may be a possibility of people who haven't taken the system before, at least the subways, who are now taking them. We're going to be out there and asking, how did you make this trip a year ago? And find out what they did and see if we have new customers. So we'll be doing that up on 2nd Avenue. And we'll be continuing with uh, select bus service uh, evaluations on Woodhaven Boulevard, on Kings Highway in Brooklyn, and the Bronx Crosstown. So we'll be out there as well doing the after segment of a before and after uh, comparison. And we'll be more to come as the year progresses. And uh, uh, we get our projects from clients as, as we go along. People drop by and say, can you investigate this? And we fortunately are usually able to say yes. And that's, a, a, in a nutshell, what we're up to. So let, let me ask you this. On, on the issue of announcements that you had there before, are you rating the change in the type of announcement, or are you actually rating the announcements themselves? OK. What we'll try and do is ask a series of questions before. Uh, are, the, are they clear? Is the MTA talking with one voice? Are they consistent? In other words, we ask criteria about announcements in general. And then we'll ask those same questions again and see what the change is after we give it a little time for changes to be implemented and to be noticed by customers. So if you get a favorable impression that the announcements were clear, you'll give a report that the announcements are OK, basically, right? I c well, I would give a report that says. I have a reason for asking that. Fine, fine. Um, I, ha I would give a report that says perceptions of announcement qualities have changed in the following way. Now, so there may be an improvement, there may be a decline. Maybe there's an improvement in consistency, but perhaps a decline in people saying it's in plain language that I can understand. So we ask the same questions before and after, try to keep it stable, and then track the changes and see if there is an improvement in perceptions. Do you actually go out and listen to the announcements yourselves after you get criticism or praise? Uh, we do not. We do not. Okay. The reason I'm asking this is at least six, seven times a week, I'm sending emails to various folks at New York City Transit about incorrect announcements being made. They were as clear as a bell. I could understand them really well, but they gave the wrong information. Well, he that's one that. of our criteria, that. That, it, that it is it helpful. Well, is the, the, the average correct? writer might think they were great. They might not know that certain trains don't run at a certain time of the day, but they're announcing them. Well, there are other people who are checking the technical aspects of the announcements, and they would have they would file a report accordingly. The, the, the people who you are asking, Andrew may call six times a week about the, that the announcements has a problem with something dealing with the announcements. You have talked to your, uh, uh, first of all, is it random sampling? That random you sample, yes. Random sampling, okay. 
But why wouldn't you want to look at people like Andrew calling in and saying there is a problem with the announcements? They may be clear, but they're, they're inaccurate. I'm emailing. Wouldn't I'm you calling. want to know Karen. about that, even though they're not in your random sample, but they have come in to New York City Transit? Well, even better, they go directly to the people who make the announcements. Yeah, but to then, then, you're, then you're announcing of your survey saying everybody loves the new announcements well, not, is not, in contradiction. Not, you didn't say that. I didn't, that we, we were speaking <laughs> hypothetically. Oh, wait, speaking hypothetically. And what I'm saying is, is if that you don't have that kind of information in your random sampling then the information that you're getting is inaccurate. I, I don't understand why you it's wouldn't want to It's not inaccurate, but it's, it's not complete in all it's aspects. It's incomplete. I, will call, I, I stand by your correction. It's accurate in, in, a, but in what if, he's if trying to do. But if that is then sent out to the public, the public says, huh? I've called in six times saying that they've put in, or you say, huh, I've called in, so it's incomplete, and I don't understand why. You, again, I'm coming back to my other question, and I'm not going to, I'm beating a dead horse, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, Marisol. As you do the surveys, are, are you selecting the folks, or can the folks self-select? Let's say they see you. Well, a random sample means we go into the system, and you ask every third person. I know, You're but just let's, grabbing say, people. let's say you missed me. And I want to participate. Well, that, that is how things go. You, you have a barrel, and there are marbles in the barrel, and you reach in and pick one. I, because I, I totally, doing that in a random fashion. No, I fashion, totally understand this, the way you're doing your sampling. But if I am a person that wants to take your survey, you're saying they would not be allowed to do the survey? Because it wouldn't be random. Yeah, yeah, you, not, yeah you can uh, say. It, no, it, but it would be random. He would, he in most cases, it, this really is dependent on the particular project that we're working on, but in most cases when we're in the system, when we have customers who want to take the survey, and one of our surveyors, for example, is already occupied giving the survey, they'll wait, and the surveyor will just take them when they're complete. In other words, we, we, we generally don't reject people from taking our survey. It is a random sample. Anyone passing by is perhaps a, a likely respondent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stuart. Let me try to get at Trudy's point another way. So when you start, when you, st I'm a public policy analyst. Okay, That's my background. I have the same background as Ellen. We've evaluated the transit authority for years. I'm not beating you up, but just so for clarity, you explained your role is narrow in terms of responding directly to clients' requests. Yes. You've explained to Trudy at nauseam that you share the results of your findings with the client, and the client has other sources to obtain the other information. Thank you, yes. Now I'm saying it another way. So when you design the survey, you meet with the client and have an entrance conference and discuss the scope of the survey, correct? Yes, yes, right. yes. So during that exchange, are they sharing with you things that they've heard that would help you build in your non-biased questions about the types of concerns Trudy's talking about. So Andrew's, the, the topic could be um, uh, accuracy of, an, uh, of mm -hmm. announcements. Mm -hmm. They're sharing that yes. type of information with you at the beginning of the project. At the beginning of the project, we generally ask the very, you know, some very basic questions, one of which is, what do you need to decide? What are you trying to discern? What decisions are you making? And then we try to tease out the appropriate questions to help them answer those basic questions. Okay. And I think some of this is informed by that. I mean, I'll give you an example. Yeah. When we were writing a, a large-scale customer satisfaction question and we, we sent the attributes to various different departments around the agency, uh, our subways people were sold, told us we've been getting a lot of complaints about the temperature in the subway cars. When you have a question on your survey about temperature, can you please follow that question up and say, what is it about the temperature that you're not happy? Is it too cold? Is it too hot? So, so in that sense, they, so they do know that. Exchange. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Absolutely, thank Fine. you, sir. Great. I have a, a, a different question um, that I think may help us, and Bill, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, 
the instruments that you're putting out there and everything sound um, really helpful. And uh, thinking we as the Writers' Council, um, and you've always been very open to hearing our, our thoughts and all, but it could be helpful to us to um, take the same instrument you're using it out there and, and answer some of the questions based on what we've experienced or heard out in the field as another um, input of information and to organize sort of um, the feedback we're giving you to understand uh, what areas you're looking for and if there's an other fill in the, you know, fill mm -hmm. in the thoughts you have, something like that, I think would be helpful to us and our members um, to be on whatever list it is for the instruments you prepare and being able to be more organized in how we give feedback. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions since I've waited um, everyone's comments. Um, the question that I see, because, you know, you're saying you're doing surveys on the SBS buses, and I see the 82 as one of them. Are you, did you guys check when the 82 is running local and is limited? Because I use the 82 when I have to go to the office and heading home, and those buses are very crowded, and they do have waiting time. There's a waiting long time, like Rockaway Parkway, East 16th on the B&Q, Rockaway Parkway on the LMN, and other sites of different parts of Brooklyn. And as well as I'm going to say, the, uh, the only thing I will say is regarding the SBS is that a lot of people, when they start an SBS, you still need to educate the community because tell, tell them in not in English language, but Russian, Chinese, and all dialects, or Idu, or any language, or Spanish. It's, it's very important that the survey should be also in different, I know that you guys do sometimes do a different language. But the Lanrex barrier on the 82 line, B82, there is a gap because some of the people, and I'm going to use the sensitivity piece, there is some issues on that. The other thing is, is yes, I've been on the R211 thing, and I've been, let me, I'm going to say is, do we have any new updates of how the surveys went with the R211? Uh, that the R211 report right now is uh, under review in the car equipment department. They're sharing it with the designers. There may be some further modifications of the report, so it's still a draft, so it's still confidential. Once it's final, it can be shared, but it's uh, at this point still and when, in draft. And form. when it when it is ready, we like we'd like to please, as Andrew, Bill, and Deb, who's behind me, please keep us informed on this because as Edith and I. And other people have been at the there. We like just want to know what's the update because we hope to see. And I wish Scott was still here. We really hope that Staten Island does get a new train because if it starts to rain, you better have your umbrella ready because it rains on the train. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I like to keep that. I still like want to make sure yeah. that's on there. You need to alleviate this problem. People are complain about the survey. They complain they can't participate in it. Uh, you need to do what you can to alleviate that problem. Because if you don't, you'll continue having um, to continue to receiving complaints. Well, some people said that they had a problem participating in the survey. Okay, you need to alleviate that problem. So this way anyone and everyone can participate in it. Because remember, the riders are two people. They're the people who pay to ride the buses and trains, but they're also the eyes and ears. And some of some riders like myself don't get treated like riders. We get treated like the bad news bears and the white shadow. We also get treated like stereotypes, much like JJ from Good Times. And I stated in past MTA, public hands, and boy, means that I was treated like a stereotype, much like JJ from Good Times. Okay. Well, we interview every third passenger, so or something like that. We're out there doing random samples. We try to speak to everyone. We don't have criteria. If you're on the bus, we want to talk to you or the subway. Andrew, use your mic. Andrew, talk. Ah. Turn on your mic, Andrew. Uh, how long does your typical interview A period typical interview, last? Uh, it's it's frequently governed by the interval between. Your trains. mic's not on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> The interval, be the interval between trains and buses often governs how long it can be. For example, the uh, onboard subway satisfaction survey, we're riding the train, so we can actually be four minutes, three to four minutes. 
Uh, sometimes uh, it can only be a couple minutes. It's, uh, so depending. you wouldn't you wouldn't interview after the train has passed and interview the next group of people as part of your interview. Well, depending on what we need to learn, we have a set of questions. We try to take that set of questions and fit it into the time available to us. If well, we're see, that, there's the problem, Jim, because if there's a gap in service, and then after that there's frequent service as trains make up the gap, you would get an an inaccurate assessment while you were there interviewing people in the frequent service and yet you might have missed the long gap in service. So um, why you only do one train's uh, you know, headway worth of interview is a little odd, isn't it? Well, it, it, that's the length of the interview, but we're interviewing for hours at that location. So there could be gaps, there could be that's you what know, I'm trying frequency. to get. Your hours at a location. Oh, hours. Oh, yeah. I'm hours sorry. Hours I, oh, hours. oh, okay. We're there from 7, for example, for the uh, subway, onboard subway uh, service quality. Uh, we're there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. That's what I wanted. And, and what we find was we do have some wonderful customers who are willing to, to stay beyond. You know, we'll be interviewing them, and their train will pull in, and they'll say, oh, I'll let that train go. I'm here to give you information. And they're great. Yeah. But we can't expect that. <laughs> sure, can, sure. Can, can I suggest something following up on what Andrew said and what Ellen said and what Stuart hand. said, which is and actually everybody. Since we are the eyes and ears of the general public, and we get a lot of this information, usually negative, but to us, I would be ha I don't want to volunteer for anybody else, but as you're setting up your, your surveys or your focus groups, and if we could participate in some way, not, not in all of them, but at some time, to share our information with you, it might make your surveys, a and most and all of us use mass transit also, so it's not that we're looking from the outside in. And I personally would be happy to volunteer to be in your focus groups, even if you do it by random sampling, I'm happy to be random. Of course, we're okay. not necessarily in the places that they're no, doing. No, but we have gotten the information. For, no, but he said they set up focus groups also. That, and that is not in, the, in, your, in your, I assume your focus groups are set up. You, you, you randomly select people to then be in your, in your focus groups. Is that correct? It depends on the situation. Yeah, but at times, well, let me be clear in my, words is my business, at times, you set up, you randomly select people to be in your focus groups. What I am yeah. suggesting is when you get people, because I know, and I think everybody sitting around this table, represents the views of not only our own views, but a lot of other people who have come to us, both negative and positive. Usually it's negative, but sometimes it's positive also. Would you be amenable to that dealing with us as the liaison to the vast general public that you're reaching out to? Well, we often actually refer to members of this group. Could uh, there's at least four people sitting in this room that I've worked with in the past. So it does happen. Well, our, our railroad councils actually could be a guide on how the railroads work with us, um, which is, um, one in this survey, they ask if, uh, if we'd uh, like to add a question or two. Um, and then uh, before they've completed the survey, that this is just on the um, customer uh, satisfaction. satisfaction. Um, but the other is, while we don't ever participate in the focus groups, that we're invited to observe the focus groups. So we have a, a, also a greater appreciation of the feedback you're getting and, and what's be, it, it informs us. And so that, that's been a, a, a pretty well, uh, that works well for us. Um, and, and also then being able, once you've completed the survey or the instrument, I think us being able to um, take it ourselves outside of your study uh, to give some thought to what you all are thinking about, I think would be valuable. Thank you. Alan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I apologize for being late. That was before 
I apologize for being late. Keep qu excuse me. The principal reason of this meeting is to hear from the public, not the actual council. Not you should hear. But it's for people to come and issue complaints. And you can look at it up in the law. Excuse me. Why don't we spend more time arguing over this and eat up another 12 minutes, and then I can make, make my one-minute point. Make your point, Alan. Uh, uh, I was late because I took the charwoman's line, the BMT. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I look up there as your, your plans for 2018, but I'm referring to the last one, more to come. Yes. There is something that I would like to look into. Three or four years ago, at a meeting of the uh, MTA Board's Transit Committee, I asked that I look into extending, see, I don't know, you're looking at some things here, but extending the transfer time on the Metro card from two hours plus a few minutes to two and a half hours. I was told, you, it was, our surveys show it's not necessary. Can I see the surveys? No, it's proprietary. I didn't move from there. Of course, it's not proprietary, and I could have forced the disclosure in state Supreme Court. Um, given that service, not that it's bad, but we've had reduction of service repeatedly, 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 starting with that Republican uh, piece of uh, whatever, George Potecki, uh, and, other, and subsequent governors, we've had re the reduction in service, so now, System-wide on the subway, there are half as many runs in a 24-hour period as there were in January of 19, uh, 19, uh, 1981. You could look it up. I would like to know, will you look into extending the time by a half hour because there are fewer trains and far fewer omnibuses on the streets of New York and people need more time. If two hours is what you gave in the first top place when the Metro card went in, now it's time to make it two and a half hours plus. Uh, footnote. Alan, uh, why, why do you think these gentlemen are in charge of making that decision? No, they say, they do, they, because they're market researchers and they can, that's so a catch-all term. You're asking when for people that ask question. me what I do, I tell them I'm in market research, they don't ask any more because they don't know what it is. It's a catch-all term. Because, why? Because you're looking into service. And one part of service is transfer time uh, be, uh, between buses and buses and buses and, uh, and underground. So you're asking for that to be put into one of the survey questions? Well, well, actually, since they say they do with surveys that we find two hours adequate, let's dig up those surveys and see when they were done and by what, not or by whom. Yeah. I don't know if that was a market. It's not a market research survey. It might have been a technical study, quite frankly. Yeah. It's, it's a technical Your associate is nodding his head, yes, it's a technical study. No, I have agreeing with him. It sounds more like a technical issue than a customer. Yeah, I suspect, yeah, I suspect they're looking at distribution. Well, I guess when customers don't care about the transfer time, and it is. I, I, I guess think, I think you, you're, you're no this. doubt aware that... No, no, but yesterday uh, the MTA board passed uh, a change in the tariff, which when uh, there is a train a bad train delay or a breakdown or what have you, uh, through no fault of the passenger, uh, clerks at, at the various stations can now issue uh, block tickets to folks and they will, the, the time limit for the Metro card is extended because of those delays. You will, you, if your train is disabled or there's an accident or what have you, that you will be getting extra time. That was passed yesterday. But weren't there always block tickets? Not this kind. That was for a different kind of problem. Oh, I've also gotten a GO ticket. Nobody has seen that, beige color. But um, I always ask for a block ticket when there's something like that, and the guys just give me the blue one, usually undated. Thank you. Okay, okay so it's not your, it's not your shop. And it no. sounds like a technical study, sir. Yes, it does. And who would that I have, be? I have a, another hand up if I can I get revenue, I would think. Yes. Thank you. One more, one more public comment, and then we will get. Uh, then we'll thank our gentlemen for uh, for their presentation. Omar, go ahead. All right, we, we did see each other yesterday in Brooklyn. All right. Um, yes, I have a couple of um, couple of ideas for the market research uh, starters. Um, whenever people like um, pay with coins on buses, 
they only get a bus transfer. Why can't that work on the subway? It remember that transfer is supposed to be from buses, 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 subways, subways, buses. Um, I feel like that's one way we, we can improve in this. And another thing, and another, and another way we can actually improve the subway action plan this year is by modifying certain routes. And now Andrew, now Andrew and I have been in agreement regarding the extending the C train to Lefferts Boulevard and modifying the A service in the Rockaways. But now with the President Byford here, maybe he should look into that. You know, because I wrote that in my letter to him okay. that, that that's a, that should be a top priority. All right. And I, and I suspect if he if he if he moves on that, he'll forward a, a recommendation to do, so. a do a market research study. That's see true. What, we do see work with clients, and with if someone, our client, yeah. if, I, if Mr. Byford was my client and asked me to do that, I would do that. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> survey <laughs> survey C that. riders and Absolutely. ask them, ask them Absolutely. how. Absolutely. And, and Rockaway riders about, who yeah. obviously we, we have probably would plan something that would affect that whole branch of service. Well, we're going to have to thank you for your presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Very interesting. Take care. Thanks a Appreciate lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Chris. Um, I have a couple of bit new business. Edith, you paid. Uh, Edith? Excuse me. Uh, as I was saying is, um, we did, you know, lately, we as TRC members and I will say the community, uh, you know, we did been doing surveys in the past. You know, can, is there a way in the near future we can do the hump project? survey again as you know we had That's done in the kind. past when they did start to add them up because now lately yes and the gap and the hump like you mentioned like 145th 150 uh let's just certain lines are now added the ada stations uh guys can i have a please i'm i'm thank you uh, this is so important because the survey because you know since now we're seeing stations are being refixed a little bit and i'll say some is there a way we can continue doing that survey and as well as the do the uh, check how the trains have been improved a little bit on that survey as well to keep ourselves busy this year? Want to say something? No, I was just going to say it might be easier to we know what the results are were of our uh, the survey we did and it might be easier just to ask NYC Transit where they where they've done projects that have uh, it have improved either the vertical or horizontal gaps. I mean that that would probably be the quicker way to do that to do that and, and go out to look at those to ensure that they they really did um, address the problem. Because the concern is is um, yeah, and that that's the way you're not doing random. That way you have a reason to to inspect. Because because to be honest with you, when I was on a line, and they were supposed to fix the hump, they have not. And I'm and if and it's well, actually thanks for being honest with me. I am going to be honest because Edith can vouch with me because she was with me on that time. And I don't need just someone to vouch. I believed you. I know. <laughs> well, I'm making sure it's on the record. Anyway, so who cares? But, Andrew, is there also in the near future, um, I just blanked now because I just had it in my head, but uh, with these surveys we do, I hope in the near future when we do these surveys, can we all try to do a press conference to get like everyone know what we've been doing and get ourselves a little so I people know who it, we are? We did that. We, did, we held a press yeah, conference. Yeah, we, 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 we it, we did, when we, we do the, the new report out, we did it. We did it. We did. Yeah. Although we did the gap study, and it was a, it was as much as a surprise to to PCA to TRC members as it is to the general public. Um, and I, I have seen work that's being done, but I'm not sure how extensive that work is. A simple report from transit as to what they're doing about the gap may be the answer. Yes. Right. Yes. And as specifically I when suggest. a route such as your A route has changed equipment type and that affects the gap, um, I think that's a perfectly legitimate uh, letter to write. Andrew? Yes. Um, I heard Andy Byford on um, Brian Lehrer this morning, and one of the questions was about the gaps, and he's very aware of it. Obviously, he's very tuned into the accessibility, so it, you know, I think that would be very timely for us to. Absolutely. Uh, that, uh, yes, I think it would okay, be. Okay, Andrew, I don't want to take up a lot of our time. I was going to bring up some bus problems and some uh, transit me, trains why I was late today. But a while, I spoke to Bill, some of these on the phone. He had asked me to bring it up under old business. 
what I will be happy to discuss it with you, but I would like us to have, there are so many bus problems. You'll get some of that. Can we set up another meeting with Daryl now that he's back working sure as the can. head of buses again and as soon as possible? Because I don't want to, uh, Bill will have some of the information that I was going to put on the record here, mm -hmm. but I am asking now publicly as soon as possible because with all due respect to these gentlemen and everything else that was discussed today, I think it would have been more, much more useful to have some operating people discuss immediate problems than how they do or don't set up focus yeah, that's, groups. Yeah, that's a different meeting, surveys. different people. and No, but I'm just saying in terms of, of what would be useful to us in the future. Yes, we can have a bus meeting, absolutely. Uh, two things, uh, old business and current business. Speaking of buses, the last meeting ended abruptly. I felt and I expressed to the few people that were here that the speakers were really disingenuous to us. If we're revisiting buses, I think we need to, as a group, reconnect with the visitors at the last meeting and follow up on what they're doing about the questions and deficiencies in their systems to monitor and measure and implement service. So you'd like a follow-up letter I to think them? We'd, right. Okay. I mean, their, their, their chat was interesting, but they left us with more questions and uh, really didn't say what they were doing to address the uh, problems with the new system that they had adopted to monitor service uh, or address the issues that others had with um, buses that were out of service or fixing gaps. Or buses that don't go the full length of the, the length, route and right. leave a big that's gap. Right. Their yes. ability to monitor Short that. Uh, so I, I think that was a left hanging. Here with this group, again, there was a, that visited today, while they're very nice, I think, and, and were very informative, they have a very narrow mission. Very narrow. Very narrow. But, and they acknowledge but it. I, but I think they did not answer Ellen's question, uh, which I think I heard very clearly, which is we're requesting information or access to their survey results. They're not an audit group. They don't make recommendations. But it might be beneficial in learning whether the information they shared internally is actually being translated into action for the customer, which is one of our missions, seeing that the customers get service. The other aspect of that, Trudy's point, and I think there are various ways to do it, and others have said this about the, we have a lot of information that we collect that could be valuable in their development of questions and how they're eliciting the real issue. So. Even though, their, even though their role is very limited internally, that question never was answered about sharing their results. The, last, I think the last point you made about um, getting information from us, if they are hypothetically hired to, to survey riders at Alabama Avenue on the J line, um, and they go out there one morning and they, or for six hours and they and they look at the service on the J and the Z lines, for instance, we probably wouldn't be in a position to have been there at that time to give them any kind of meaningful I'm input. I'm talking in a general way, and maybe someone else could back me up on this. Yeah. So like when they're doing the select bus service query that's coming up, they're not designing individual questions, uh, nuances of the King's Highway bus, the 82 route. They're, they're looking at broad brush strokes. So there are people here with different perspectives. That's for sure on select Mate. bus service, oh, and that finish. information could be valuable in the design of questions. Ellen, Ellen made an offer. Ellen spelled out yeah. how she thought it would be useful, and her answer, w and his answer was, thank you. Didn't say yes or no. Yes, I would suggest, point, wasn't and that I think is what Stuart, in his much nicer way than me, but he's much nicer. I think we're a matched pair because he says it nicely. So when, I just when we send them I am thank asking you, letter, you let's to send a letter with saying we would like, and I gave Why him Why the angst, Trudy? Because we're agreeing with you. You know the frustration? We're agreeing with, with you. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't require this level of anger. Because of dealing with these people for the last half hour, you bang your head up against a wall. The wall doesn't move. You try, get a bad headache. Six and right now I have a very bad <laughs> headache. But I would ask that we do a follow-up letter to these people as soon as possible. Incorporating Ellen's request. Incorporating Agreed. Ellen's request, Stuart's request. It was, Ellen, was Ellen just she said it. Nod her head. Ellen said it the best way. Uh, Andrew? Uh, 
Andrew, I like to I like to make this one thing clear. Is you know I did appreciate and I agree with Stuart definitely on the and Trudy. We're all saying the only thing is is it was nice to see what they do, but again they need to remind them that we there are issues that's going on, and I know I brought this into Deborah already, but again it still needs to we need we definitely need something to be done because you know two for two oh for mm -hmm. two. Right now, with with the with the surveys, I've been with the survey, but there's only one question that he didn't answer, and I'm a little surprised. Is what part of surveys you've been doing with the 82 bus? Because the community, as I said, it's a heavy, really heavy line right now, and yeah, you're you're getting into the level of detail now that he wasn't prepared to get and into. And he should have been ready for that if he wasn't sure. One, and a, can I please? Can you turn on your mic? I can't. No, no, no. I don't know, but just the only thing I'm he, saying is he is, probably didn't bring all of that. But if he wasn't it's sure, it's like I said, like the bus division too. If you're not sure, can I say, can I get back to you? Can I please? Uh, I'll get you that answer. Instead of stressing yourself, or instead of someone yelling at that person, let's. You know, the truth is, they shouldn't just promise when they can't keep. We got it. So, and. Andrew, later we need. I think this. If we need to make sure that these speakers are more, not just prepared, but if they're not sure, just say please. We'll get back to you with an answer, maybe soon, without telling us something. Well, the other thing we don't know is that if any of this survey that was contracted for by whoever asked exactly. them to do it is confidential or not. I mean, I assume it could be just you for use within transit agencies. Mm -hmm. We need to find that out too. Agree. Yes, Carol. Two things. Um, one is, obviously, they have a list of um, the surveys that went that, let's just talk about the past. We could go to the clients if we know, like, that there was an SBS thing and find out what the results are. Obviously, they are, the, they are doing the work for the client. That doesn't mean that going forward, we know some of the issues that they're addressing that's where I think we go to them and say, can we, you know, see the surveys and give input? So I think there are two different issues. Yeah. I mean, going to the client... Do you know who Jim Sears reports to? Uh, well, who, he didn't even answer that question. No, he really didn't. Oh, um, well, somebody in marketing, and now I think it's Greg Bullock, and until there's maybe a VP of customer service that Andy will probably appoint, you know, he'll probably be under the customer service person oh. when when that person comes on board. Okay, because that might that might be the person or persons that we need to address this to to get included in this stuff. Uh, Alan, and then yes. will be coming to one of the meetings. She wants State Assemblywoman Linda Beth Rosenthal will be coming to one of these meetings of Transit Riders Council uh, to speak to us, she to will. us, on the uh, issues of uh, decreased bus service, etc. Uh, but uh, overall, and the other thing, I again to uh, iterate what I told you on your telephone, uh, in a couple of months can we have the new chief of the Transit Bureau uh, to well, We intend to invite President Byford, but we want him to get his feet wet first. No, I think that, oh, by, by, do you mean Transit Bureau? Do you mean NYPD oh, you Transit mean, uh, Bureau? NYPD, he did say NYPD. Oh, you mean okay. uh, yeah. the new chief, De La Torre? De La Torre. Yeah, yeah sure. well, we'll give him a yeah. chance to get... <laughs> Let him get a chance to, to, to get find out to the place, well, too. Both. Remember where his office is. Yes. And then we'll we will both, do that. <laughs> both of Mr. X. Byford, Hose, and De La, uh, Towerman. Okay, this is regarding old and new, and or new business regarding this meeting. Also, the next meeting, which will be held four weeks from today, I contacted Wenderson and sent him an email that earlier this month, possibly within the last two weeks. Yeah, there was another pro another computer problem downstairs. Why well, I don't know. I spoke to two female guards. One of them said, your name's not in the system. Oh, your name's got to be in the system now. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going with what I was saying. I personally sent the email us to uh, Wenderson, since he's the current PCCED, the head. His name's not on the list? You're just a fake head, but that's another story. No, but I'm just saying that... 
that 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 the computer the computer, today, the computer problem the computer problem occurred the last two years. This year it started under one month ago, and we're, we're, we're at least I'm back to square. I guess all of us are back to square. No, this has to stop. Okay, it happened in the last two years, and I said in back in December, Disney's the end. Okay. We've given your name, and, and even our, one of our members' name wasn't on the list today. So. Also, also, also well, it's the only one in there. <laughs> okay. Also, okay, uh, as I stated, uh, possibly in December, that at, at previous NYC Tuesday meetings, I spoke and certain individuals uh, interrupted my speaking, which I don't appreciate. And there's one that shows whenever uh, she feels like it. The show shows like once every six months. No, okay, they need to stop interrupting what I'm speaking, especially if they're not punctual with the time. I don't care if they're absent, late, doesn't matter. You know, I don't interrupt them when they speak. They should interrupt them when I'm speaking. That's common sense. You two need to help me leave this pump because, like I said, you're the real head, you're the fake head. But you're both heads. Otherwise, I'm the fake head. We yes, wow. you're the fake PCAC head. How do you know? Yeah, we we uh, you know people people speak when when they're recognized by the chair and the chair decides who who is going to speak in what order. Okay, but I'm saying that there's no excuse for any anyone here to interrupt me, especially if that person isn't punctual with his or her timing or is showing once every six months, and we have a member that's doing that. Your point is it's, made, Mr. It's, it's like she's missing an actually like Chuck Norris. Thank you. Um, so we're going to adjourn now. Thanks to everybody for coming. And we'll see you. Um, February 22. Feb 20. Yeah, I think I, I believe it's, 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 it's the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd for our meetings next okay. month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is the fourth Thursday.